Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be using the Saddle Up stamp set to show you how to make a card where you draw your own wagon because it's super easy. I'm going to be doing it using this cute MFT stamp set. It's got two little cow kids on it, a girl and a boy. It's got a bunch of accoutrements that go with it and just these little, little things that go along with the sentiments as well. And I saw that wagon wheel and decided I was going to make a wagon. There is no whole wagon out of here, but I wanted to do it in pencils. And so I was looking overall at my three hex charts for my different pencils to kind of get an idea of which color colorway I'd like because one is a little brighter one is a little more cheerful and this one feels more Western just looking at the three of them in a row I don't know if you see that or you want to back it up and look through and see if you agree you can certainly find these same colors in the other sets of colors there's you know they're mixed in there but this one I thought would just it just seemed to work best so I'm going to use my luminance pencils and I've got this stamped onto some Stonehenge paper. So it's nice, soft drawing paper, and it's gonna take the pencil really nicely. And I am starting off with a light color. And I'm just gonna refer to these by kind of the color description as opposed to the numbers in case you're following along with a different set of pencils. The way that I am deciding on what colors to use is I'm looking for, I looked for a color here that's a flesh tone, but really dark and purple-ish because I wanted to make a shadow from her hat onto her face. So I used a relatively heavy color and I'm coloring it darker than I want it to be eventually, but I am going to layer over top of it. So I needed to have enough color underneath there that it's gonna stand out. So don't worry, she's not going to have that like strange sunburn underneath of her hat for very long. And then use a really, really light pressure to do the bottom side of her face. Now, if you have taken the colored pencil jumpstart class, you'll be familiar with my number system for how much pressure to use. I'm using about a two on most of this as I'm doing my layering because I prefer to use lighter layers and build up to something heavy rather than start with something really heavy. There are some artists who insist that going really heavy with their pencils is the way to go and for me it's not because it, it hurts my hand. <laughs> it's tiring to do that but now I'm increasing the pressure and since I had a couple layers of color underneath it there I can go over top of that purplish color and bring it back into more of a flesh tone color. I'm going back in with uh, a medium flesh tone type of color that's not only burnishing the color in here, so I'm pressing a little harder, but it's also lightening the color that's underneath of it when I have a, a, a different color under, under it. Not sure how much sense I'm making right now because I'm really tired while I'm doing this voiceover. So there you go. For her hat, I decided to make her a brown hat and I'm speeding this way up because my colored pencil work tends to take me really long. So I color with my colored pencils way slower than my uh, my Copic marker stuff. And again, those who have taken the Jumpstart class will know exactly how long it can take. Because just one little piece of this will just be going over and over and over it, trying to get the color nice and even with these really super soft, super light layers. And in the class, you see some examples of that. So here I'm adding some darker color. I, I had noticed that there was this dark color that was behind her ponytails too. So I'm you know going in and increasing the contrast behind that so her ponytails will come forward and the back of the hat goes backwards and then do some shadows on either side of the hat. And then I can burnish over top of that with more color. Because when you use a really light pressure, you have lots more options for when you wanna stop. So if you wanna stop and do some blending with your Gamsol or baby oil or any other blending technique, which there are a ton in the class, then you can stop and do that at any point. If you start going in with really heavy color, then you're limiting your options for what you can go over with. So here I can go in with a little heavier pressure this time. So I'm basically burnishing with color and it's bringing the dark color that was in the shadows more into blending with that midtone. So I'm getting a little smoother of a transition between them. 
And as I've said before in my colored pencil videos, I'm one who likes the texture of colored pencil, so I don't really mind a whole lot when there is some of the texture showing. If I want to go for really smooth, I usually will go for my Copic markers because they blend really smoothly, whereas pencil tends to give me this really nice texture. My training in my early days in college was as an illustrator. I actually rented a room from one of my art professors in college and she was a children's book illustrator and she used color pencil in this light, very layered, very soft kind of a way. She's incredibly talented and she taught me how to do that and I just fell in love with it. Unfortunately, I don't end up using this for my finished art very much because it takes me forever to get anything done. I've been working on a large flower piece for a long time. It feels like, gosh, it's been a month, I think. I haven't been working on it consistently, but I'm used to my watercolors or my Copics where I can kind of get something done in a day or a few hours, whereas colored pencil just takes hour after hour after hour to continue adding more color to it because I like that very soft, very light buildup of color. And eventually uh, on my social media, I'll show you the flowers that I've been working on. I did a little bit of them uh, a few weeks ago in a Facebook Live, I believe, in the student Facebook group. So if you're one of my students in any of my classes, doesn't have to be the pencil one, can be any of them. There's one big group for everybody. So it's kind of fun to be able to see what other people are doing in classes that we're not taking. And you can decide whether or not it looks like everybody's having enough success that you can handle it. Because some people want to see whether in my drawing classes that I have, is that something that they could, could deal with? And it gives you a little confidence to see someone else try it. So this is the wagon. And all I did was do a box behind the wheel and I created a little lip out there so the back of the wagon is hanging open because I wanted the cake to be on it. When I stamped the cake I put a sticky note right over that bottom portion of it because if you look at the stamp itself there's grass like the plate has grass kind of or something on it and I just kind of blocked it out so that I could draw in the bottom of the cake myself and make it work with whatever my drawing was going to be. I could have made the wagon go all the way over to the left, but I wanted that cake to be taller and to hang out the back of the wagon. So with my wagon, I'm using a couple different colors to try to blend together to make some old weathered wood. So I'll have a different color than my little girl and her, her browns that she's got for her hat and her skirt and her boots and things. But the cake then, I could draw the extra parts in and finish off that bottom, give it a plate at the bottom end. And I decided to make the hat on the cake a different color so it didn't look like she was trying to be twins with the cake because that seemed like it would be a little weird. And notice also that I'm adding a hat band on each of my hats because I used to live in Montana and I know all about hats. And I always liked the ones that had hat bands on them because they had just a little something special rather than just the hat itself. And I like having a little bit, a little bit more color in there as well. And so for the rest of the cake, I'm just going to add a little bit of different kinds of browns and things, a little bit of grays in order to give some roundness to the cake itself. So just add a little bit of darker color as I kind of get more confident with the shadows. And that's another thing with colored pencil. When you go with these really light layers, you can slowly work up those shadows and not have to feel like you're freaking out because you've put too much color down. There are ways to erase it and stuff and to lighten things out, but it's also a lot of fun to be able to build it up slowly as you get confidence. And when I stamped her and the wheel, I also had wiped off, you can probably tell, the bottom of the stamps. I did that with a baby wipe so I could kind of make her feet go into the dirt as well as the wheel. And while I'm coloring the envelope real quick, I thought I'd show you the other card in the upper left is another way to do the wagon. The little boy is facing the other way. So I put the wagon on the other side, stamped the sentiment, and then drew the wagon around the sentiment. and just gave him a bunch of dirt in the, the ground as well, instead of putting a cake in there. So there's a lot of different things you can do by creating a wagon. You can put all kinds of things in it. You could put the kids in the wagon, which would be really fun. 
and coloring on the envelopes is always fun as well, especially colored pencil works great on envelopes. It works great on just your regular kind of paper. It doesn't have to be fancy paper. And it will indicate to the person getting the card in the mail that there is something really fun and special inside. And for those who always ask, where can you send me a card so I can see what you're making, especially if you case something that I do, I love to see what you create. My address is on the envelope, that's my P.O. box, if you care to send anything in the mail, because I love seeing your creations. So there is my finished card and envelope, and then the little boy. And both of these will be on my blog if you need to pin something so that you can remember how I made my little wagon. Alrighty, thanks so much for stopping by for a few minutes to visit with me today on YouTube. And I will see you again next time I have a video up, which is only going to be in a couple days. Don't worry, I won't be gone long. Don't miss me too much. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>